This is Greg Locke. This sermon is called Exposing Witchcraft in the Church, and it's just as bizarre as it sounds. This is part three, but you don't have to see the other parts to understand what's happening here. I try to make them independent of each other. He spent most of his time accusing his church members of being witches, which he believes is the result of protesters leaving tarot cards laying around the church campus and putting curses on people. In this part, he's going to air some serious dirty laundry. Apparently, some of his church members aren't very happy with how he's running things, so he goes on a diatribe about how they have no right to complain, he controls everything about how the church operates, and if they don't like that, they can leave. Let's get into it. I know pastors that call me on a regular basis. I wouldn't embarrass them and call their name because I love them and I feel sorry for them. They're at it again. Well, you know, he just called out a whole bunch of pastors by name. I'm not sure why he cares about these other ones. Their name because I love them and I feel sorry for them. They're at it again. Every year they have something they call a, a vote of confidence. Can you imagine that? God calls a man to start a church or God calls a man to go to a church and every year unspiritual people in the church get together and the sheep try to discipline the shepherd? Well, you know, here's the problem. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. On the influence continuum, organizations or leaders that are destructively influencing the people under them tend to be in favor of an authoritarian top-down power structure with no checks and balances, no accountability whatsoever. That is exactly what Greg Locke is describing right now. He is condemning people or calling people out for trying to hold bad people accountable for their actions. This is the prime example of an authoritarian, extremist, destructive group. Greg Locke is exhibiting all of those qualities in broad daylight. That's not even biblical. Where are we going to have a vote of confidence? You and your family, you, you go out back. You know, we're just going to let you hang out out there. And so uh, if you want to keep the preacher for another year, I, if you want to get rid of him, nay. And what are they doing? They're intimidating him with his job. You know why? Because ultimately the manipulation and the intimidation of the board, which the only board in the Bible is the one Paul floated in in Acts chapter 28, but that's a whole other message. Guess what? He comes in and will never say things like we say from our pulpit and on our live stream. You know why? Because they've silenced him over domination. Because they hold money over him. Well, you don't do things the way we want. We'll find us another preacher. You know yeah, I mean, there has to be accountability. I can't believe this guy is condemning the concept of accountability right now. Yes. People should have accountability. If you don't have accountability, the preacher is free to just go completely off the rails right into extremism. Who's to say he won't turn this into a witchcraft organization? What are people supposed to do if their pastor turns it into a witchcraft group? There has to be some kind of accountability, some method of accountability, right? No, not according to Greg Locke. He does not agree with that. He does not want accountability. Under any circumstances. It's just bizarre stuff, man. That is witchcraft. That is 1,000% witchcraft. Now, look, I'm, I'm glad we have a different structure. We have a biblical apostle-led type structure with, you know, men in the church and pastoral staff and things like that. But I want to tell you something. You know why that kind of dog won't hunt around here? You ain't going to threaten me with money. Because money don't... Yeah, Greg Locke doesn't need to worry about, like money anyways he's got plenty so doesn't really matter motivate me giving it away motivates me let me tell you a little known fact all right little known fact just gonna just gonna spitball just kind of throw this out there you know why i would never worry about people in our church coming to me and saying well you know brother like i don't know if you talk like that Woo, it's just gonna dry up and you know we just we, we just don't know if we can we just don't know if we can keep paying you if you're gonna keep talking like that you know what's amazing about that let me tell you something Little known fact. Our staff don't even know this, but they're about to. I do this on purpose, so I don't want no woe is me. I purposely do this. Do you purposely piss people off and cross lines when you don't need to? Let me tell you something. Every man on our staff makes more money than I do. Okay. I don't pay myself above the groundskeeper in this church. 
Okay. Like, I, I'm i very, very skeptical about everything that Greg Locke says, particularly because he has brazenly and openly lied about some things, even recently. For example, he lied and said that he dissolved his 501c3 status with the IRS. He didn't. I can currently, actively, right now, look up his business license and see that it is an active business license operating as a nonprofit. So I don't trust a word out of the guy's mouth, especially when it's designed to make him look good. When he says it with the intent to make himself look good. I don't believe him. I'm sorry. I ain't in this thing for money. Oh, and, and notice what he said there. Uh, every man makes more money than him. Not every woman, but every man. That was a weird little detail to add. You hear me? So you ain't gonna manipulate me with money. <laughs> I didn't need it before I started this church. I don't need it now. I don't operate under that. Don't even own my own house. The church owns it all, right? So y'all get... That's not surprising. A lot of churches own the housing that the pastor stays in. But Greg Locke owns the church. So... What are the practical effects of that setup? The practical effects are Greg Locke basically owns the house in a roundabout way because he owns the church and the church owns the house and he doesn't have to pay property taxes on it. So don't try to act like you are holier than thou or that you're a giver because the church owns the house. You own the church. It's just a way of avoiding taxes once again mad and throw me out listen they go Hold on. don't even own my own house the church owns it all right so y'all get mad and throw me out listen they go bobby one bit if you think i'm gonna compromise you've lost your mind if i can fight them demons on the telephone then look the way that greg locks church is structured is in a is in an authoritarian way they can't just throw him out he owns the company. There isn't a board in the same way that there is a board in other churches. Not, not in the same way. So he, obviously he's not afraid of being tossed out or whatever. It's a whole lot easier for you to move your membership than it is for me and my family to move houses. Right? Money don't mani m money. You can't manipulate me with money. Because I purposely pay every man in our church more than I bring home every week. You say, well, Brother Locke, you're tooting your own horn. B.R. Lakin said, of a man that never toots his own horn will forever have a horn that remaineth in the state of untootedness. Toot, toot. What? Let's just step back and listen to that one more time. I like saying not to toot, not to toot my own horn. Toot, toot, baby, toot, toot. Let's listen one more time. You can't manipulate me with money. Because I purposely pay every man in our church more than I bring home every week. You say, well, Brother Locke, you're tooting your own horn. B.R. Lakin said, of a man that never toots his own horn will forever have a horn that remaineth in the state of untootedness. Toot, toot. Oh, so he says, whoever doesn't toot their own horn won't ever have his horn tooted. Well, that's simply untrue. When people respect you, they tend to toot your horn for you. You don't need to toot your own like, other people will do it. I guess I could say that's spoken like somebody who has a horn that is not worth tooting. I'm just telling you, you ain't going to manipulate me with money. You ain't going to intimidate me, right? We got all kind of fire going on at this church. I mean, something all the time. Well, Brother Locke, you talk like that. We'll kick you out. I'm like, is that a threat or a promise, <laughs> right? We got some crazy people around here. Hate Greg Locke. Hate my family. Hate you because of your association and proximity to this place. So it ain't going to intimidate me one bit. But if you're not careful, you will not even be. Good spiritual people have been so bewitched. Acts chapter 16, spirit of divination. These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. Was she wicked, low down, drunk, sorry? No, she wasn't a prostitute. She was telling the truth, but it was under the wrong influence. Python spirit, spirit of divination is what she was involved in. And so often people, even in the church world, this is how it starts. 
starts about like this. Somebody says, hey, uh, we need to pray about something. Oh, yeah? What do we need to pray about? Well, this is what I heard. Your manipulation already started because ultimately, here's your main goal. Make them think about them what I think about them. You don't even think about it. But that's your ultimate goal. Prayer request, my hind leg. God ain't hearing none of it. If I regard iniquity in my heart, Psalm 66, 18, the Lord will not hear me. He will not hear me. And that's how it starts. Would you, did you hear about sister so-and-so? I go to some of these churches and they'll be like, I got a prayer request. We need to pray for sister so-and-so. She ain't here tonight. Let me tell you why. You gossiping thing, you. Wow. Earlier in this whole thing, I was just kind of glancing through the live stream messages and somebody said in one of the live stream messages, gossip is the spirit of witchcraft. Like gossip is part of witchcraft, apparently. So I guess he's kind of back in that that sentiment up, huh? This is I guess this is an example of like people using prayer to gossip. It's witchcraft. Because ultimately your goal is to make people think the way that you want them to think because God forbid somebody thinks different from you. But a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. And some of you that claim to have a gift of discernment have nothing but a spirit of suspicion. And you've caused great division in the body because of it. Hmm? Now I can call preachers' names out. I ain't calling names out in the church. Every bucket sits on its own bottom. Everybody knows who they are. What was that? Every bucket sits on its own bottom. Everybody knows who they are. Every bucket sits on its own bottom? I don't understand. I sent off a pretty rippy, rippy snippy text a couple of weeks ago to our staff. And we got a pretty big staff. We're growing. I love my staff. I'm the easiest guy to work for on the planet. And I'm a decent pastor, but I'm a horrible boss. I don't like getting in people's business. Yeah, I, I, from what I've heard, from what I've been told, Greg Locke is like absolutely nutty on stage. Obviously, we can see that for ourselves. But I've heard that he is very non-confrontational and very kind and calm and nice, basically. When it, you know, when he's not on stage. That's my understanding of it, which is pretty surprising. So he says he's a horrible boss because he doesn't do what needs to be done, basically. He has his head of security do it for him. Uh, they call his head of security Hulk Hogan. But I sent off a nice little text a couple weeks ago, and I said, we're done with this division. Right, right. Yeah. I'm just, listen, our staff works for you guys. Huh? We, we like, in, in a way, we like spiritual politicians, right? You put us here. You pay our bills. And so, look, I'm telling our staff right now, I mean from this pulpit right now, right now, tonight. Tonight. You cut this little witchcraft behind the scenes. We got ourselves a little text thread that the preacher don't know about, but the preacher's got all of it. Oh, no. Apparently, there was like a, a group chat, a text group chat that Locke doesn't know about that his staff is partaking in. Oh, shit. That's that's interesting. And I guess he's really, really upset about it. Oh, I got to write this one down. 132.30, roughly. Locke's staff has a secret group chat that he wasn't supposed to know about. Oh, that's a big deal. Because everybody you think you're confiding in is coming to me. I'm talking to leadership up in this house. I'm done with it. It's witchcraft. It's divination. It's sorcery. Stop! Stop it in the name of God! Wait, divination is fortune telling or like telling the future, right? 
Were they prophesying in the group chat? There's a thousand people want to work at this church next week. That's true enough. Huh? I said that's true enough. I'll get to the deliverance team in a minute. 828. We ain't going nowhere for a minute. But I ain't having it. I'm sick of it. You hear this? You hear that? I don't want to hear it. You know why nobody comes to me? Because they know I'll shut it down. It's witchcraft. I'm done with it. Man, I, I love our volunteers. I love I'd take a bullet for every staff member we got. I ain't paying people to stab me in the neck. I ain't having it. You come to me or stay home. I'm telling everybody in this church right now, I'm telling everybody on our staff, we got a big one. If things don't change in the next couple of days, this is going to be an expensive month because I'm going to write about five severance packages. I ain't having division and witchcraft on this team. Wow, dude. Now he's just losing his mind over this. Help me, Holy Ghost, while I preach. I ain't having it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I know every bit of it. I, I have had 15 meetings in the last week of people coming to me about division. Amongst the leadership. Are you kidding me? If we can't get deliverance out of the world, the rest of them going to get it. I ain't got a hypocritical bone in my body. Am I always right? No. Do I make bad decisions? Yes. But I'm going to tell you something about leadership. God will bless a bad decision by me more than a good decision by you because he called me to be the shepherd, not you. See, this is the problem. His church, obviously, his, his church staff feel like there's something wrong. They feel like there's something that's not quite right about how it's being operated or how Greg Locke acts or something like that. And they're basically trying to orchestrate a coup. Greg Locke owns the church. There is no... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? There is no way to kick him out or whatever. There's no way to stop the way that this is operating right now. There is no recourse for them, ultimately. He wants an authoritarian top-down structure. It's harder to have a system where you can't be questioned if you operate as a nonprofit organization just because of how they structure they structure them differently than for-profit organizations i would be willing to bet that if greg Locke does decide to give up tax exempt status dissolve the business and form out a new church i would be willing to bet anything that the reason that he did it is because he wants to have a more authoritarian structure to it rather than being subject to a board or something like that. But like I said, I haven't seen evidence that he is structuring his church differently anyways. I haven't seen evidence that he's giving up on tax-exempt status anyways. Yeah, he wants to be a dictator. He wants to be a dictator. That's the goal here. And that's just the way the thing rolls in the Bible. Dude, is he crying again? Come on, this isn't even cry-worthy. And I, I, I'm, I'm tired of it. Ain't no more, none of these behind the scenes crap. You come to me or you're fired. Am I making myself clear? I the fact that he said that they're fired if they don't come to him tells me that they aren't even board members. They're just regular old staff members. So there is ultimately nothing that he can do. Now, a nonprofit organization must define a board of directors a group of people who vote on who the CEO is, basically. Um, but you don't have to... You can define yourself as one of the board members and your wife is the other, and that's it. You don't have to expand the board out to, like, you know, 12 people or whatever. It doesn't matter. It can be an authoritarian kind of setup. So I don't know how Greg Locks is set up. It may be set up that way. But the fact that he's talking about firing people tells me... These aren't board members that he's talking about or that are talking behind his back or whatever. These are just regular staff members. These are not people who can do anything about it. 
Like, if he goes completely off the rails, which, by the way, he already has. These are just normal people that have no control over anything. At best, they were hoping to probably elect a representative to talk to him and ask him to do this thing or that thing or whatever else. I'm tired of it. Now, I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to show you a few things that I'm tired of. Everybody okay? Because I'm tired of this in the church. Because our staff started this. And it should have never went anywhere. i tell you something. It, it should have stayed with a handful of people, and now the whole church lit up about it. Uh-oh. It should have stayed with a handful of people, presumably the staff members who were upset. What is he talking about? God, I wish I had, like, he's airing his dirty laundry. Absolutely. I wish I had more information into what was happening. Okay, 135, uh, 16, roughly. Locks, whole church knows about some dirty laundry. Speaking of laundry, I need to do laundry in a little while. Oh, man, I wish I knew. I wish I knew what was happening right now. It, it should have stayed with a handful of people, and now the whole church lit up about it. So why not address it? I ain't got nothing to hide with you folks. This only thing I got, I ain't going nowhere else. I'm burying my heart in this tent. I'm going to die here. I ain't got nothing else. Oh, God, I hope he tells us. If I hear one more time, one more drama. You remember him talking about intimidation earlier and how intimidating people is witchcraft? Let's start this sentence over. One more time. If I hear one more time, one more drama. One more word of gossip about Greg and Lisa, Lisa Borchers. Greg and Lisa Borchers. Interesting. I got some research to do. Oh, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find this information out. I'm going to know. If I hear one more, you hear... Quiet clapping. Me? Yeah, I hear you. If you hear it one more time, then what? Then what? What's going to happen? Tell us the intimidation tactic that you're about to use, Greg. One more. Oh, I know he's got a demonstrative personality. That's why I hired him. Wait a minute. Greg Borchers. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I know exactly what's happening. Okay, I, I, I could be incorrect here. I believe Greg Borchers is his head of security, also known as Hulk Hogan. That's what they call him. Uh, don't don't quote me on this. I still need to research it to be super extra sure. But I think Greg Borchers is his head of security. And if that's true, uh, I know that the guy is well known to be a scumbag, just a terrible intimidator. He He runs around and attacks people and intimidates them and he's just awful he's just an awful person greg borchers is greg locks uh what do you call it like what's the word i'm looking for here like his his weight like he pushes people around for greg because greg is non-confrontational and doesn't like getting into arguments or fights or anything like that so greg sends his head of security, Hulk Hogan, around to do this thing or that thing for him. his muscle. That's it. Enforcer. Yes. Muscle. Uh, henchman. All of those work. <laughs> so anyways, that's I, I if that's who I think it is, I'm pretty sure it is. That's what he's talking about. And a lot of people don't like how Greg Borchers has been acting. I guess. I mean, Brian and Gina Warren, the original witches that Greg Locke originally called out like back in February 
they had their own stories about Greg Borchers or AKA Hulk Hogan and why they didn't like him. I'm guessing that this all comes back to the guy being a scumbag, his hired muscle, pretty much. Okay, let's keep listening. He may add detail to this. That's why he travels with me all over America. Keeps my butt safe. Yes. Yeah, I, I believe it is his, his hired, his henchman, his muscle, uh, Greg Borchers. I believe it is Hulk Hogan. Yes, yeah, sometimes he can be a little mm, forceful. You let me handle that. But I'll tell you something, there was a little skiffle a while back, a couple months ago, and, and, and we, we did a real good investigation, right? I went to Greg and I'm like, hey, bro, and I knew what was up. And some of our people came to me like they should have, thank God, but then it kept going, it should have stopped there. Well, we reckon Greg Borches is stealing money. And so then all of a sudden, people in the church that had nothing to do with our volunteer team, deliverance team, prayer team, or staff, started talking about, oh, it, 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 is, it, is Greg Borchers stealing money? See how it starts? That's witchcraft. Oh, that's fascinating. If Greg Borchers is stealing money, I'll eat my own dirty socks. Okay, nobody wants you to do that. I think they want you to get to the bottom of the money theft thing. I pay him as good as I do any other man on our staff. If he needs something, ask me. Our staff, no, nobody in this church would ever have to steal from Greg Locke. I'll give it to you. Good grief. I'll give you the motorcycle if you can't pay for it, right? Like I said, Greg Locke in real life is, from what I've heard, a very generous, kind person. And when he needs to do something hard, like when he needs to, you know, kick somebody out or, or whatever else, it's always done through Greg Borchers, his muscle, his hired muscle. Um and but of course, when he gets up on stage, he turns into a complete d bag. Uh, he doesn't hold back when he's on stage, but generally speaking, in his everyday life, he's a very nice person or non confrontational. But I'm sick of hearing that crap. I'm tired of it. The other day, somebody roll up in the, in the, in the oh, I got to talk to you about something, Pastor. And I'm like, can I have one drama free day? You know, you you get back what you put out in the world. I'm not, you know, I don't believe in karma, but that is effectively what's happening here. You know, you, you put it out into the world, you act like a scumbag, you scream at people and act like a monster and hate people and fear monger constantly. You know, people are going to, those types of people are going to come around. People are going to bring that type of drama to you. Oh, I got so-and-so said this, and have you seen the, look at this screenshot, and I'm like. You know how long it's taken us to build the staff we have? I've gone through, blow your face off, steal all of your money, take half your church, go somewhere else, hate you, amp up the media, act crazy. Act, I've paid for that stuff for years. Then we build a dream team, and people start coming to me. Hey, uh, I know I'm not on staff, but so-and-so confided in me, and... You know, I just, I just don't know what to think about it. And here's what they say. Well, you know, they said, shut that up. I don't believe you. You a liar. They, is, by saying the word they like that, it's called weasel words. <clears throat> weasel words are basically referring to some amorphous unknown authority, like Trump saying they stole the election. Who? Who is they? They orchestrated this whole thing. Who orchestrated it? Who orchestrated what, for that matter? Like, you're giving us absolutely no information, but acting like you know what you're talking about. That's called weasel words. And generally, if somebody uses weasel words, you can know pretty confidently that they're full of shit. And that's what Greg is talking about right now. He doesn't know what weasel words are. He doesn't know the difference between constructive and destructive influence. He doesn't know how cults operate 
or why an authoritarian top-down structure is bad or th- or any of that stuff. He doesn't know any of it. He's just making shit up right now and not realizing the significance of what he's even saying. They don't exist. When somebody sits down and says, well, you know, I got people coming to me. No, 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 no. You got one man coming to you because his wife won't shut up. Ooh, he's really calling people out right now. Did you hear me? Did you know we've never had a man leave this church by himself? I've been here 16 years. Well, that's because in your ideology, women are supposed to be in, in subjugation to men. They're supposed to follow the direction and instruction of men. Men are the spiritual head of women, aren't they? Isn't that how you, you view things? I mean, they're just following the instructions that you gave them, right? I've never had a man leave this church by himself. Every man that's ever left this church or I've ever fired off my staff had a wife that did. See, this is funny. This is, this is Greg blaming women for the things that he doesn't like. It's the women's fault. If the men weren't with these toxic women, they wouldn't have left. That did it to him, divined him, and put all that witchery on him. You think of every single person we've ever fired. Every one of them. I can think of one man that left our church last year this time down there by himself that wasn't married. And that's only because Marty Lampkin was in his ear. Good men don't leave good churches. Good men leave good churches because their wife has a spirit of witchcraft that he will not calm down by the power of the gospel of Jesus. I don't care how mad that makes you. I'll preach to an empty house on Sunday, but I'll preach to one that's godly. I'll tell you that. I ain't playing your witchcraft games. I'm sick of it. So I'm just making sure church knows, volunteers know, and dear God, my staff better know. I'm sick of it. God, I love how he managed to blame women for everything wrong. This is just pure, unadulterated misogyny right here. You come to me, or you pick up your check. I ain't paying people to stab me in the neck anymore. Somebody came the other day and said, oh my goodness, we can't believe that you made a decision to bring on John Guffey as a full-time security guard. Well, number one, he ain't here yet full-time. Number two, John Guffey's done more to build the unity and the cohesiveness of our security team and keep me from getting shot in the face than any man, any 10 men that we've ever had on this team. Yeah, I don't know who John Guffey is, but okay. And I didn't have to crawl up on your front porch and say, Oh, great, mighty, majestic one. Would you please tell me who I'm supposed to hire? You know, anytime there's a group of people that's bigger than two, and sometimes even smaller than that, there will always be drama. Always. There will always be drama. There will, they will always find a way to start shit with people. I learned this the hard way with Discord and Twitter and every other social media platform out there. When you deal with large groups of people, there will be drama. The only exception to that rule is Twitch. So take that for what you will. Twitchers are not dramatic. Well, y- you guys aren't anyway. Some of them may be, but not you guys. So. <laughs> I haven't had a, a single instance of drama on Twitch, and I'm honestly impressed by that. I think that's really cool. But yeah, drama is pervasive in groups. There's no way to avoid it every single time. No. No. We work for God, and we serve in this church. So I'm telling you, I told you, I'm done with it. There is only one person in this church that I would ever be bothered by if they left, and that's my wife. Now, I'd cry over the rest of you, but I'm, I'm, I'm not fighting you anymore. Wait, he wouldn't be bothered by them leaving, but he would cry over it. Okay. 
You either figure out that God's doing something in this church that seven or ten churches on the planet aren't even experiencing, or just, or just go down the road and, and, and just, tell, just go tell me in the next six months where you're going to find what God's doing in this house. But I'm done with it. So now let me move on. It's 836. Let me talk to our deliverance team. Man, I thank God for our deliverance team. I really do. Some of y'all need some deliverance. And I'm going to sit you down. You hear me? I said you hear me. Yeah, so he thinks that the reason this is all happening is because they need demons exercised from them. So if you think about it, basically what he's saying is he believes his entire church is possessed by demons. Wow, this is interesting. Let me just step back here. Hang on, where did this start? Some of y'all need some delivery. Yeah, okay. 141.55. His church needs to be exercised. If you haven't seen part one earlier, he was talking about how somebody's been laying tarot cards around the church, just kind of sticking them underneath the whatevers and, and all that stuff. And he believes that they're trying to place curses on his church. And I'm getting the impression that he thinks that the tarot cards are responsible for the demon possession that has infected his church. He thinks that all of his people are possessed by demons, and that's why there's all this drama. Absolutely fascinating stuff. Some of y'all need some deliverance, and I'm going to sit you down. You hear me? I said you hear me. You see, this is father lock tonight and pull a little dad card ew <laughs> this ain't even manipulation or intimidation this is something I should have done a long time ago not let the train get out of the station this past Sunday night we had one of the best deliverance services we've ever had we're almost 20 weeks in this week give God glory 20 weeks this coming Sunday night this coming Sunday night But during the uh, fireworks, a beautiful couple came. They were here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and they, they brought this uh, just sweet Latino young lady with her. She said, you know, the Latino culture just didn't have a lot of deliverance, and I need it so bad. And I think you mean Latina lady. He called, her, he called her a Hispanic man by using that terminology, but okay, go on. I thought you weren't into pronouns, Locke. You know, the Latino culture just didn't have a lot of deliverance, and I need it so bad. And she said, I, I, I really felt some stuff, witchcraft, spirit of Santeria, that's big in the Latino community, especially among Catholics. And she said, man, I just really, whew, man, I got a lot of freedom, and your workers did such a good job. She said, you know the number one thing I actually came for deliverance for? I said, what's that? She said, I had a spirit of anxiety a while back because I went through a horrible divorce from an abusive, narcissistic jerk. She said, I picked up smoking like a freight train. And she said, I'm just going to tell you this in love. She said, tonight I was delivered from everything but smoking. I said, really, why is that? Or, or last night I was delivered from everything but smoking. I said, really, why is that? She said, because two of your deliverance workers were standing outside of the tent smoking before deliverance. Actually, it's because, you, because smoking is not a demon. The demon of smoking, it doesn't work that way. And you can't exercise a demon to end an addiction, which is something that Greg Locke believes. It's just complete nonsense. You either get your deliverance or get off the team. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. Okay, that's fair enough. You know, if... There are smokers on the team. I, I get you can't be like a staff member and a smoker. You know, that, that's fair. That's fair. You hear me? I'm not saying I'm right. I got my issues at times, too. But, but I double-dog dare you to try to find any wicked, sinful, compromising, rebellious inconsistency in my life. I'm trying to live holy. I know everybody struggles. But, but, but get fixed and then get off the struggle bus and then start. Because here's what we're doing. We're turning people away that need deliverance. And you telling people, 
come out in the name of Jesus. God will deliver you from that. And they're thinking themselves, why ain't God delivered you from that? I'm just being real with you tonight. Yeah, you can't, you can't be on, like, the staff like that. And also, it, it's just like when you're dealing with, when you work at a substance abuse program as a substance abuse counselor, you cannot be actively addicted to drugs, you know? So it makes sense that he expects that of his people. I'm done with it. I ain't messing with witchcraft no more. None. And I've seen too much of it in the world, and I've seen way too much of it in the church. We're either going to love each other, or we're going to shut this thing down and sell it to Barlow and Bailey Circus. Uh, because he's in a circus tent. I don't know if you guys knew that, but he, he bought a gigantic circus tent to hold his services. That's why he says he'd sell it to Barnum and Bailey Circus. I ain't a babysitter. I'm a pastor. I don't even like being a boss. I'm not even a boss. I'm a pastor. I'm a shepherd. It's what I do. Yeah, because he doesn't like, uh, in, in his everyday life, he doesn't like confrontation. He's not a good boss, he says, because... He doesn't like telling people hard news, basically. Okay? So I'm telling you, I ain't messing with this witchcraft around here. Manipulate, intimidate, so they can dominate. Go try that somewhere else. There's plenty of churches. Pastors will let you get away with it, and it'll be great. You can go hex them. You can go vex them. You can go, you know, you, you can go play a Ouija board and read a Bible at the same time. I don't care. But you ain't doing it around here. Everybody cool? So I Wow, that's this is just a weird sermon, dude. So I ain't gonna sing louder when the Jews are going by. Oh, uh, he's making a reference to earlier in his sermon where he said uh during the Holocaust the pastors were asked to sing louder when, you know, Jews were being taken away from the cities and to camps or whatever, uh, in an effort to drown out their cries and things like that. Um, I don't even know how true that is. I don't know. Maybe it is. But in this scenario, he was comparing himself to those pastors, and he doesn't want to be the kind of pastor who doesn't stand up for the downtrodden. Uh, in reality, his church is... His church absolutely would have been on the Nazi side in World War II, without question. They are heavily conservative. They're fear mongers. They, they feed on hatred and disinformation and all that stuff. His church would have been one of the ones on the Nazi side. Seriously, I don't say that to be offensive or anything. I'm just saying it's the exact same rhetoric, the same mindset, the same everything. I'm going to jump out in front of the train and say, stop in the name of Jesus. You let them people off that train right now. You hear me? Let them off that train. You know, QAnon is recycling old Nazi ideologies and claims. QAnon is recycling the old tropes. Uh, they even have a, a huge problem with Jewish people in a lot of ways. They make all the same accusations that the Nazis did. Seriously, QAnon does. It is the new Nazi movement in a lot of ways, QAnon is. And Greg Locke is a QAnoner. Full-blown QAnoner. So to think that he would be on the other side of this, we don't need to wonder whose side he'd be on. We know whose side he is currently on. He's on the side of QAnon, who is on the side of... The Nazi party. They repeat all the same tropes. So if you want to take you and your marriage and your kids and your family to the death chamber, then go ahead. But I'm going to jump out in front of the train. I'm going to stop it. The train stops now. Train stops right now. So actually, it, it seems to me what he's doing is he's comparing his internal church drama to the Holocaust. It, am I reading this correctly? I don't want to hear it. If you have something I need to know, then you come to me or my wife and you tell us. I don't want to hear it third party. I ain't even going to listen. I'm going to promise you right now, if you do not come to me, I will not take any of your concerns seriously or valid at all. I just won't. 
I just won't. You're going to have to man up, woman up, and come to me and say, look, these are the valid concerns I have. And if they are not valid, and if they are not biblical, you are full of slander, you are full of gossip, and you are full of witchcraft because you're trying to get other people to think about other people what you already think about those people. And I ain't having it no more. So I've made myself real plain tonight. Plain as I need to. Say one more thing. <clears throat> Somebody came to me the other day. Actually, they texted me. I, I, need to, I need to speak with you about something. I said, okay. I mean, I've had like 15 meetings about the same junk. I assume it's about... Uh, his Greg Borchers, his head of security, stealing money or being too tough on people or something. So I'm, I've, I've had enough of it, right? He said, well, you know, uh, so-and-so has a problem with your wife taking over at the end of the service. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, it, at the end of each service... His wife, Ty Locke, gets up there and says a prayer for everybody. Uh, it, it makes sense that people would have a problem with that. The Bible specifically, 2 Timothy 2.12, I believe, says, I will not suffer a woman to teach. She should be in subjugation to men, so on and so forth. What is it exactly it says? I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. Let them listen quietly. That's basically what the what 2 Timothy 2.12 says. So it makes sense to me that these fundamentalist types of people would have a problem with his wife teaching at the end. Not to mention the fact that she completely contradicts what the Bible says she, she should be doing. Matthew 6, 1 to 4, give or take. This is uh, Matthew 6, 5. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Now, there's a difference between somebody praying to themselves and somebody praying in front of their congregation. Like, I don't see anything wrong with a pastor or whatever leading a congregation in prayer. That's okay. But listen to this next part. Uh, then your father who sees what is done in secret, secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. We say that the battle belongs to the Lord. And Lord, you have never waged a war that you do not win. And so, Lord, today we say that in this time, in this war, God, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And Lord, we bring into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. Lord, we say, let this mind be in you. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. I was like, well, you mean like somebody on Facebook or, oh, no, 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 somebody that does a, a lot in the church. They, they just, mm, they, mm, ooh, mm, 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 mm. Let me tell you something. They too shall be one flesh. She didn't know I was going to say it, so it don't matter. I wouldn't have a ministry without this woman. So they shall be one flesh. I guess what he's saying is her praying is basically like him praying. That's, that's interesting. But doesn't seem theologically sound to me. The Bible explicitly says women are not supposed to teach. Now, I think that's wrong, personally, and stupid and ridiculous and hurtful and misogynistic. But he isn't supposed to view things that way, right? If the Holy Ghost tells her to get up and pray while I'm preaching, I'll stop because I believe in the Holy Spirit that's in her. So if people don't like my wife praying or like what my wife says, then here's what you do. You come to me like a normal person. You say, well, you know what? I just don't think I, you know, I'm not going to gossip about it. And I'm just, you know, I'm not going to tweet about it. But I just, I don't like that you're, okay, that's good. We can agree to disagree. You know, the, the problem is that Greg doesn't make himself very approachable. He doesn't make himself very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He doesn't make himself 
into somebody that you feel that you can talk to about problems that you have. When he gets on stage, he comes across as violent and angry and an extremist. And when he gets on stage, he is those things. But he expects people to know that he is approachable in everyday life. It's just he's asking too much of people here. But don't let me hear it from somebody else. Especially when I watch you run around on Sunday nights. Come out in Jesus' name. Oh, no, 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 no. You come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of criticism. Spirit of hip. <laughs> spirit of criticism. Spirit of what? Criticism. Spirit of hypocrisy. He believes they're actual demons. Seriously. He believes that there's a demon of hypocrisy and a demon of criticism that are possessing you. And you need to exercise those demons to stop exhibiting those behaviors, basically. Spirit of slander, spirit of chaos, spirit of disorder, spirit of division. Whew. So, uh, so look. And she don't need no fan club. She don't care. She nerf, she's like embarrassed right now that I've even said anything. I'm just telling you. Why can't we handle stuff like adults? Sometimes I, I, I feel like I'm at the, back at the ball field watching Caden. Why can't we handle things like adults? So uh, do you think that has anything to do with the fact that you absolutely scare the shit out of people? That the things that you say disturb people deeply and the way that you say them? You think that it has anything to do with that? All the parents are like fighting. The kids are like having fun and the parents are fighting with the referees. They call them referees, what do they call them? Umpires. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, man, this would be fun if these parents would shut up. And I'm like, man, deliverance and salvations and baptism and giving millions of dollars away. Wow, it'd be fun if the adults would shut up. <laughs> Let's just load the bases and hit a grand slam for Jesus. Stop being a manipulator. Stop being an intimidator. Stop being somebody trying to control the situation, control the narrative, and just let God control it. Just let God control it. And so, look, witchcraft is witchcraft. We've got to call it out for what it is. You know, we, we like to candy coat it and call it this or call it that. Bible calls it plain. It's, it's just trying to control the narrative. It's trying to control the situation. It's trying to... Mm -mm. I'm not trying to control your life. You've got free moral agency. You can do what you want to. Every bucket sits on its own bottom. I preach to love you, not to intimidate you. Well, you're doing a piss poor job of not intimidating people if that's the case. Just got to put that out there. I'm not trying to coerce people online. If it coerce? Coerce people? Anything. I run more people off through the way that I preach rather than trying to manipulate them and draw them in. Because at the end of the day, I am so averse to a spirit of witchcraft. I don't care what people think about me. No, I mean, he said this exact thing earlier and immediately afterward said, if I hear one more person say this, continuing to manipulate, continuing to intimidate, you are a cult leader, and as a cult leader, you attempt to control people. That is what makes you a cult leader in the first place, Greg. You are a cult leader, whether you like that or not. I don't get invited back to Thanksgiving meals sometimes. Don't care. I'm not looking to win friends and influence people that way. I'm looking to win God's favor and influence people for the kingdom. He made a reference to a book just now, Win Friends and Influence People. I've mentioned this before, but that book is... It's a book all about how to manipulate people. Uh, it's an amoral book. I would not recommend it at all. It's not good. Um, I've read just about every book on the subject of mind control and manipulation just because that's the field that I'm in. I want to understand how it's done and how people are controlled and all that stuff. That's not a good book. It's, it's a terrible book, honestly. It's just weird that he keeps referencing that. This is like, I don't know, the, the fifth time I've heard him reference that book throughout his recent sermons.
So whatever's hidden is always going to be brought to light. It's just the way it is. And I've got 27 things written down that we're not going to talk about. So we're just going to pray, right? I'm just, I'm just, we, just if we can't be a deliverance church that talks about witchcraft unless we're going to deal with witchcraft. But it's not the form of witchcraft that we normally hear. Okay. Okay. We all know that's crazy. I know Scooby Doo monsters up in here. We all know we, we, we're not talking about we're not talking about the Satanism and ritual abuse and killing rabbits and shape shifting. No, 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 no. What? Why is he saying this? This is exactly what he's been talking about this whole time. Satanic ritual abuse is a fundamental QAnon belief. And he is a QAnoner, and he does believe this stuff. I've heard him talk about it before. This is actually what he's been talking about for months. Is he reversing course on it suddenly? We're talking about the reason your marriage is a mess is because one of you is a manipulator and one of you is an intimidator because both of you are trying to be a dominator. And if you would both submit yourselves to each other and submit yourselves to God, you wouldn't have to worry about domination. Because you'd live together harmoniously. And so tonight, good grief, let's just live together harmoniously. So in the name of Jesus, come out witchcraft. All of it. All the witchcraft, all the control, all the mind control. All of it. It's got to leave. It's got to leave. And of course, this is a direct result of all the tarot cards that protesters have placed around the tent. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> he, I mean, this is what he believes. He thinks that this is like a curse that's been placed on his tent because protesters keep placing tarot cards around it. It's got to leave or you got to leave because I ain't going nowhere. And I just love you enough to shepherd you and tell you that, okay? Lord, I pray tonight that you'd bless what's been said. Lord, bless in-house, bless online. And Lord, we... Well, I guess he's saying the prayer tonight. Usually his wife says the prayer, but he mentioned earlier people have a problem with his wife saying the prayers at the end, which makes sense, of course. The Bible specifically says women are not supposed to lead men or whatever else, but... Um, is he, like, reversing course? Is he not going to allow her to say the prayers anymore? I, I, just don't, I, I just don't know how people can miss what you're doing here. It's so unbelievable. we got people moving from all over the world. Just talked to people two days ago from Australia. Pack it up, moving here. And not for Greg Locke. They sure ain't coming for a tent with cedar chips on the floor. They're coming because the glory's here. Well, it is a mega church, and it is incredibly influential and well known among lots of people. So it's not just like a tent with a with cedar chips on the floor. Like that's not a fair representation of what's going on here. And if somebody misses the glory being here, that's on them—not you, not me, not anybody else. So, Lord, help us to do some introspection tonight. Help us to do some real solid soul searching tonight. Because I have watched people that I absolutely love, just like the young man I mentioned at the beginning of the message, get nefariously yet simplistically pulled away because of divination and domination. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. So I know we've had to be raw about some stuff tonight. And Lord, I ask publicly right in front of my friends, right in front of everybody, in here and online, if there's anything in my heart that displeases you, show me tonight. Convict me so much I won't even be able to sleep 10 minutes. Show me, Lord. I ain't perfect. And now when he does go to sleep and he's perfectly fine and he doesn't like receive revelation from God or whatever about something he's supposed to be changing, he's just, he's just going to say to himself, well, I guess I'm perfect the way I am and there's nothing I need to work on and I'm just going to move on. Convenient, huh? Lord, if there's something that I'm doing that's wrong, show me within the next 10 minutes. And if I don't get a message from the Lord in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to assume I don't need to change anything about myself. I'm perfect the way I am. Good grief. I got a long way to go. If I got any witchcraft in my life, if I got any control, if I got any evil 
If there's any rebellion in me, if there's any, anything at all in me, Lord, that would be displeasing to you, that would grieve your spirit, that would harm my relational connection to others for the kingdom, Lord, if there's anything in me, don't even let me eat and enjoy it until I deal with it. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Know my thoughts. Try me and see if there be any wicked way in me. I put myself up to the test tonight. Try me and see if there be any wicked way in me, Lord. Please show me. Reveal it to me. And then give me humility to repent of it and turn from it if you do. Well, at least the guy's showing, like, an attitude of being willing to change. Unfortunately, he's not going to change in the ways that he needs to change to turn this into a group that isn't a cult. Anyways, that's the end of the clip. Usually his wife comes up and does the closing prayer, but as he saw earlier, I guess people aren't really happy with that, so he decided to do the closing prayer this time. Either way you slice it, this was absolutely bizarre. The whole thing was bizarre from beginning to end. If you want to see more stuff like this, then let me know in the comments.